So the prodigal son of Final Fantasy IV of Paladin Cecil and Rosa, Theodore finally comes to us as one of the more hyped characters. But to be honest, I'm gonna not, I don't really see it. I'm gonna be honest. Um, and we'll talk about that. Without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in. As always, big shout out to the Tomberry Troop for the lovely infographics that will be displayed in this video. A lovely group of people, if you are not following them on any of the social media platforms, such as Facebook and or Reddit, or giving the website a check, see, make sure you go do so, as they're a lovely group of people and very helpful to the community. So, Theodore's big thing is he is a holy DPS with some support mechanics kind of sprinkled and tossed on in. Um... He functions around this ability called Awaken, which he basically turns Super Saiyan, uh, and he gets access to better forms of his abilities and skills that do more damage, uh, have better potencies, uh, it even turns his EX from a 4 hit uh, AoE uh, attack executed twice to a 6 hit AoE attack executed 3 times. Uh, th this also gives him some further stat increases, as well as buffing the, other, uh, the rest of the party with some decent auras and everything like that, as long as you self-manage his HP. Um, his LD is a burst that cleanses all debuffs off of your party while dishing out a big old uh, AoE attack. He also has ways of dispelling. Uh, he has some burst healing in his LD and his uh, C65. There's a lot of things going on with Seodora, but his main focus is DPS, and he even has a frame debuff that he inflicts that inflicts the Holy Imperil, as well as I believe it's a 20 percent defense now. Uh, so everything that Seador does, he does to do damage. And the issue that comes with Seador, though, is that your most of your damage is going to be deprived from utilizing that awakened uh, that awakened frame icon, which you can get from using either his skill two or his LD, which leaves him with a limited number of uses of keeping this alive. So it's always a balancing act while you're playing with Seador. Do you? prioritize his longevity or do you prioritize his damage and go uh, and try and burst down the opponent as fast as possible with him and this can come with uh its issues for a lot of things because one you, you need to make sure you keep him nice and full so pairing alongside of other healers is definitely prominent uh and two it all depends on the boss that you're going up against now being a blitz style character it, it's very easy to utilize him in a manner where you can you're just going in doing straight damage and then swapping him out for the friend you can always do that but you still have to make sure that the that you're utilizing this properly if the boss has a certain an absurd amount of hp or if they do not it all depends on the boss and who you're going up against and then this is why i believe that i don't really see the hype that follows behind him because he's such a balancing act that i feel like this is going to hurt a lot of the spots that he, that he uh that you feel like you could bring him to while he does have some supporting capabilities, as well as Dispelling and Cleansing, these are very minuscule compared to the rest of his kit. And the Dispelling is actually really nice, but the Cleansing only comes from his LD, which has limited uses, so you have to make sure you're managing that properly, as well, at the same time, you're managing the LD uses for the Awaken debuff, the uh, Awaken frame icon. Do you see where I'm going? There's so much to manage with Seodore that, in a lot of cases, in a lot of fights, it might not be worth it. And a lot of the question gets tossed around is if you have Seodor, does he replace Pound and Cecil? Absolutely not. Pound and Cecil's um, requirements are so much easier to meet and manage than what Seodor has to offer. You're always going to have to constantly keep an eye on Seodor and making sure you're playing him at the best of his ability. Now, does this mean he's a bad character? No. As long as you have prior knowledge of what you're doing and utilizing with the character, you'll be able to get through content with him just fine. Just, just know that he's not just a click buttons, just go at a kind of character. You need to make sure you are managing him as the best of your ability. Uh, and that's pretty much it. It's still a pretty solid character. I just don't see why he was as hyped as he is. But overall, it's still a pretty powerful character. So someone I can say I recommend pulling for, or just out of, just out of personal recommendations, personally, just because, I mean, he's still kind of a cool character. Uh, I personally do not care for him at all myself. Uh, but yeah, now before we hop out, let's go ahead and talk about this banner here. It's okay. Uh, Sid is very dated, very dated. He's got some niche uses right right now. He can dispel buffs and things like that. And Alphanod is a decent support character that we have right now, but we have better options and are going to get better options. Uh, and this is another chance to get Onion Knight's Burst, so there's that as well. And yeah, um, again, everything about this character is solid. I just, you just have to make sure you're playing him properly and, know, and you know how, and you have to make sure you know 
what you were doing in the, the situations as they call for it. And that's pretty much it. But now to wrap it up for me on this one, guys, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.